Well, uh, there's always a common saying that uh, youths are the leaders of tomorrow. And uh, if you actually give everything needed for the youths in your country, then that country is destined for prosperity. On that note, uh, we will be talking about the emerging opportunities for youths. And we have in the house a, a, a big man, a boss, who is actually going to be helping us uh, analyze this topic this morning. I'm talking about uh, Mr. Bonaventure and the Mali, the Honorable Commissioner for Youth Entrepreneurship and Creative Economy. Good to have you in the studios this morning. It's a pleasure. Uh, you're looking very smart and, and uh, your I'm suit big. is something. Uh, a big man. I was eyeing your suit when you walked into the studios. I was thinking if I would probably have to get it after the show. I don't take it to be your size. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good to have you on the program. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Hope you had a wonderful week. Again, yeah. yeah, very well. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about emerging opportunities for youths. Well, let's kick start. Uh, my first question uh, to you this morning. Uh, we've always been told that the future belongs to the youth, uh, like I said earlier on. But it does appear as if uh, that the future has refused to come. And as a commissioner for a youth empowerment and creative economy, is there still hope for the Nigerian youth? Yes. Uh, actually, I would say there's a lot of hope. For Nigerian youth, um, the future is not to become, but the future is now. Because if you look at it, you know, in other developed countries, you know, there are so many youths who have emerged as leaders, who have emerged as present, even in Australia, in Qatar, in France, in New Zealand, and so many other countries. So there are a whole lot of opportunities for youth. But what we need to do as youth in this country is basically, you know, to build the capacity. And we also need support, you know, from all, all, all aspects of, of our, you know, our endeavor mm -hmm. to ensure that we thrive and, you know, and do well. But those opportunities and enabling environments have already been provided, you know, by some state government and also the federal government are also doing very well to so ensure that those environments, to, is to those grab those opportunities. The opportunities are there, but most importantly, some of you don't actually know that that opportunity, those opportunities are available for them. So we need to look inward, see that, and actually take those opportunities that are available for us, for us to try, you know, taking ownership of, you know, the leadership and what belongs to us. And those youths that, that doesn't know that such opportunities exist, how do you think we can make them realize that opportunities like these four youths are existing for them to grab? Actually, that is part of the things we are doing here now. Okay. Because if most of the youths can be on the social media, be in the right social media platform, they will get to know what is happening around them. But quite unfortunate that most of the youth are in the wrong social media platform, that they don't get to know what is, what is happening within the environment. So they need to sensitize them, keep talking like what we are doing here. So some of them actually don't watch television, the news line, they watch music, you know, all often and watch a, a movie. You know, they don't listen to news aspect of you know um, broadcasting to actually get the right information to you know to get involved in what is happening around there all right it looks as if the calls are already coming in hello good morning hello. all right uh if you want to call us the numbers are on your screen for you to call and join the conversation this morning and of course get to find out uh, the opportunities inherent here in the country for youths to and get involved. In a number of states too. Yeah, in a number <laughs> right, of states. Yeah. politics. We have uh, young people as leaders and presidents in Canada, in France, in Austria. What is the problem in Africa to empower young people as leaders too? Is it because we lack trust in the youth's capability? Not actually um, the, the, in Africa, you know, we lack trust. But one thing we should, you know, get to know is that there should be, you know, um, a capacity building. You need to have the capacity before you know you can emerge as a, a young leader. You know, most often the, the trust is there, but the capacity is not there. In some cases, also, the trust is not there, but the capacity is there. Like in Nigeria, for instance, like some of the state government now have started towing in the line in the direction of you know developing the youth to become you know today's leaders. Mm -hmm. Just like the governor of Anambra State, Chief Dr. Willoughby, what is doing in Anambra State, majority of, you know, um, in the House of Assembly election that just took place, find that major, most of them are youth between 35 to 40, 50. They are emerging in the House of Assembly. As well as 
in, the, in his cabinet as well, you see so many youths surrounding him. That is actually building him. And before you know, many states will begin to replicate what is happening. And that is just the thing that is happening currently in Nigeria. Okay, uh, here in a number of states, it's quite amazing how the governor has gotten himself uh, a lot of youths to work with him. Uh, you find out that uh, the, the governor himself has championed the youths. You're one of them. Uh, you're the commissioner for uh, a creative economy. Uh, we know also about Mark Okoye, who is also the commissioner for budget planning. And uh, how do you think we can make what the governor has done a norm in Nigeria by encouraging governments and other private sector to give the young youths, so the young people, more opportunities? One, well, the, the youth should actually, I keep emphasizing on this, we should build our capacity. Capacity is very important and very key. If Mark Okoye, for instance, you just mentioned, have not proven himself where he has worked before, he will not be called to come and handle this position, responsibility he has today. If I myself also have not performed well, proved some show some capacity where I was, I won't be invited by a number of state government to come and work for a number of state government. So we should be at any point in time, build our capacity and also strive for excellence. At that point, there will be a low level of confidence in you. Just let me share a scenario. Okay. There are some parents today who are chairman and MD of company, but they have children who are above 25, mm. but they cannot really wish the, the position of MD of that particular company to their children. Something is wrong somewhere. Whose fault is it? That actually means that, no, the child has not actually shown responsibility and capacity to handle his father's business. It's responsibility. Because if the child have actually shown capacity, you will find out that apparently the father will actually relieve so, uh, let, let, Let's, let's narrow it down to the youths in Nigeria. Because when we talk about uh, emerging opportunities for the youth, I want to believe that there are a lot of opportunities out there for the youths to probably grab, like you said, you know, in your opening speech. It doesn't mean that the youths are not prepared for these opportunities, or does it mean that these opportunities are not there? Creative economy, for instance, is an oil well today. Creative economy. That is where everybody is sitting, is working towards now. Entertainment and techno uh, technology. And it's an emerging market that is just it's like a vision market in Africa that people should tap into. There are bloggers who are doing very well, like Lindy Cage is doing extremely well. Mm. There are so many opportunities in the entertainment industry, even in journalism. So is a, you can do it as a freelancer. They are all there for you to tap into it, to do it. The challenge we have today, I must say, is most of the youth don't actually know or they have not seen that this particular emerging market, there are something that can come out of it. Is that belief that is the challenge, the major challenge we have? There are a whole lot of opportunities. Uh, creative economy is there, very vision. Nobody has actually done a whole lot in it. Uh, I also, okay, good. You want to you ask know, a question? A lot of people have been trained, let's talk about skills and all that. Maybe those people that didn't attend universities, uh, they have been trained. Some of them are well equipped, but they don't have the finance to start a, a business of their own. Is it not part of the challenges you are facing today? Finance is very important, but not a key factor for you to do any business. Okay. The key factor for you to do a business, if you have been trained in any trade, for instance, if you have been trained on tailoring, like what we are doing in the Ministry of Youth Empowerment and Creative Economy now, we train people on different trades. So once you are trained on that trade, for instance, if you are trained on tailoring, you do not need shop immediately to start up. But you need the machine? You need the machine. However, you know what we do in a difficult situation, you need to redefine how to achieve success. What you need to do at this point in time, when there is difficult difficulties in the economy, what you do as a tailor that you've learned fashion design, go out, develop your marketing skill and your sales skills. Go get jobs. You don't have machine. You don't have shops. Get works from people outside there. Look for a shop. Partner with that shop. You get a business. You use that shop and so. You do that for a period of time and you get your own shop. Because if you are good, you do the first designer shirt for you. You don't have a shop, but you get a business from you. 
your colleague will ask, who did this shirt for you? I will say, he's the one. And you, your colleague will also give him the contract and start doing it. Before you know, he doesn't have a shop, but he will be in that person's shop and be doing that business, be, and be doing that, that trade until he expands. Those are the basic. Finance is very important, but not the critical factor to succeed in business. What the critical factor is, the most important thing is for you to learn the trade itself, learn how to do it very well. And that is what we are doing in the numbers, to ensure that every number says, have a skill, learn the trade, not basically the money they will give you. Uh, basically, end, basically I know I know you were you were part of what the, um, um, you were part of the team when the governor actually introduced the one man one skill um, you, you know care. program he actually did for uh, the youths in Anambra State. How far w w that that program basically? What's the results the program has yielded as regarding the youths getting themselves involved in things that could probably change their life for better? The result has been massive because for, so far we've trained over um, two thousand. You know, in all, uh, because uh, the, the bank of uh, ITF, Industrial Training Fund, are doing the same program. Okay. So we are working with them. The uh, 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 NDE, NDE, Nigeria Director of Employment, are doing the same program. They are doing the employment program. But we partner with them, you know, to champion the same. And the number of state government also are doing one to one scale, you know, to train. The program so far, because what we are focusing on is not actually the equipment to be given to the youth. That is the, the difference between what we are doing in Anambra State and what is obtainable in youth employment programs all over the world. Mm. What we are focused on is actually for you to learn the trade itself. Learn the trade. If you want to learn, if you have interest in tiling, you need to know, learn how to do a good, be a good tiler. You have to learn how to do tiling very well. So when you learn the trade, every other thing follows. But if you don't learn the trade and you focus on the Tiling equipment, for instance, that they'll be given to you at the end of the program, you end up selling those equipment. So, so far, it's interesting, and the program is ongoing because we are looking at to ensure that every Tanam branch state have a, have a scale, you know, by the end of this uh, second term administration of His Excellency, okay. which we tag legacy administration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see the smile on your face. It's, yeah. it's massive. <laughs> All right, let's move away yeah. from skills and all that. Let's talk about graduates, people that graduate from universities, and at the end of the day, they are going out and looking for jobs, searching for jobs, nine to five jobs. And uh, with the rate of unemployment in Nigeria today, most of them are unemployed. So, is this uh, supposed to be a model? How do we tackle this problem? You know, in, in early 60s, early 60s, early 70s, you know, when you graduate, before you finish your college, your high college, you will see a letter sent to you, mm -hmm. two places where you can probably work in government parasatals, you know. But it's not applicable now. One, because of the population increase, the, there's increase in population, mm. and now, and decrease in the establishment, the, the development of, you know, the, 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 the company that is bringing up. Mm -hmm. So it can't work now at this point in time. So because of the increase in population and the decrease in the establishment of companies. So what you should do now, if you're going to university, you should have at the back of your mind that there is no job out there, rather for you to create job for yourself. For yourself. For yourself. So while you are in university, you should be able to, like, to fashion what you have passion in doing immediately. People don't believe in the aspect of freelancing in Nigeria and in Africa generally. Mm. So when you are in university, you want to look at the career path you want to do. You start doing holiday job at that point in time. You start doing freelancing at that point in time. You master your trade. By the time you're graduating, you already start becoming a master. And so it's possible that you read um, some other course in school and when you come out, you, you do a different career path. Yes, one can have more than two career. Yes, one can have more than two career, because the, the most important thing in career path is career should. You know, when, when choosing a career, we should look, we should look at it as if we are looking for a wife or a husband. Okay. Yes, okay. we should take so it as, as serious. We should take it as if you are looking for a wife or a husband, because that will be what we're doing for the rest of your life. And if you are doing it and you're not happy with it. You're finished. You're done. Uh, okay, th th this is the part I, I believe most the number of youths, uh, in the number of, the youths in the number of state would want to know, and of course probably key into what are the various emerging opportunities in this state that the young youths should be aware of. ICT, like today, um, 
the Minister of um, Communication in Anambra State right now to launch the ICT roadmap. People are not aware. The youth are not aware. But the publication is there. So you can imagine that. Why not any other states? Why Anambra? It shows that there are a whole lot of opportunities in Anambra State. They've seen Anambra State as a light, which they should emulate. They should emulate. You know, that is why those things are here. There are a whole lot in the entertainment industry. Um, on 30th, the um, Actors Guild of Nigeria, the Anambra State chapter, did this symposium, a three days program, on what, how to make money in acting. In writing, in script writing, the whole at Annabel Hotel, it was it was filled to the brim. People were there. This point that you see, the, the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, most of the actors in Nigeria we are there, and there were issue of pushing, and you know people get linked up, you know, to most of these celebrities and all that, and it is it is, it is interesting. Of course, mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people, not all will be actors or actresses. Now, how, how can the youth get involved in creative economy? In creative economy, entertainment is, 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 is part of the creative economy. Okay. That is the area I've just touched, touched on now, just speak about now. The second one is now is technovation. Technovation. Because creative economy is all about entertainment and technovation. And in that aspect of technology, that is ICT. So coding is a very simple thing to do. Like that we are working on partnering with IBM in the project called Digital Nation Africa. Perfect. You know, uh, in a few months, I want to regularize on the paperwork. The program will start at Education Resource Center. It's a free, a six-month intensive program on coding. So in Anambra State here, there's ProXAP, there are so many small agents, small firms that train people, like IDKC, that are there, that you pay a minimum amount of money to learn how to code. Okay. Those are the opportunities. So, uh, how can they really get involved in this? Of course, I know you're the Commissioner for Creative mm -hmm. Economy. How can they really get involved in this opportunities? Because you said most of them don't know. The publications are there. The awareness probably are there. But how can they really get involved? They have to reach out to the Ministry of Youth Empowerment. You follow us on our Facebook, Ministry of Youth Empowerment and Creative Economy. Most of the opportunities, most of the things happening in, 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 in Creative Economy is online there. So people should actually like our page, follow us on our Facebook page. You know, you will see most of the things we are doing. Or also actually go to the local government. Yeah, I wanted to ask that because we know that we have people that use our Go to we have, we have We have local government youth officers in every local government. Go to every local government, or local government headquarters. Go to every local government headquarters. Ask of youth development officers. They will attend to, they give you all the necessary information you need about what is happening, about the emerging opportunities that is, uh, that is available for the youth in the number of states. They will oh. give you all the details and information you want. Okay, yeah. are there funding for this? The funding, like, after training them mm -hmm. now, I know you're going to empower mm -hmm. them. Do we have enough funding to empower these youths? Funding will be challenging. We are trying to partner with private individuals as well. Yeah, funding for training and empowerment. Funding for training and empowerment. Yeah. The government is doing, so far we've been doing the funding, but we're also trying to expand. Like what we, I told you, like we are trying to partner with IBM on coding, a five years program on coding. Even after the, at the end of this government, our government come, the program continues. So we are going to focus on private partners, government organizations and individuals for funding. Away from sure funding, which is, you said it's a challenge, of course, uh, and that's why you're, um, uh, your ministry is partnering with some other agencies to, to, to see to its successful uh, outcome. Are there other challenges? Basically, the other challenge is the willingness of the youth, the willingness to come out to take this opportunity that is available to them. You can imagine that if we start a program sometimes, you, you find out if we start a program with 500 people, at the end of the program, is only 250 that will complete the program because of the rigorous process anyway. Mm -hmm. So they are, some of them we are not, don't have the ability to persevere, to, be, to persevere to actually achieve what they want to achieve. So those are the challenge we do have. The challenge is actually the ability for most of the youth to persevere, to, be, you know, to know that there is pains for you to get actually to be okay, successful. Most people that persevere, yeah. maybe those people that uh, sit, that sit and sit to the end of the program and all that, how do you, do you help them in getting jobs 
or do you absorb them? Do you recommend them to people that actually need them in their offices? That is recommendation. Like what we're trying to do now is at a portal, we're going to develop, have a, develop a portal that all the trained youth in the number of states, all put that are passed through different training and programs in the number of states, you will see their details in the portal, just like a job portal. Once you go to the portal, you see X, Y, this person, this what is specialized on, and all that, the details are there. Like the same way we did at the um, um, Sculptors Competition that we did mm -hmm. sometimes last year, and we're mm -hmm. going to do this year as well. The Sculptors Commission, the successful one, all the people that made entry into the Sculptors Competition, we developed a brochure for them, very, you know, elaborate brochure that is, is, on the, is in the airport, is in the embassy, most of the embassies, that people look at it and call them up to do a sculptural work for them. And it has been working very well. Uh, it's quite amazing when you look at things happening in the creative economy here in Anambra State. But let's, let's take a, 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 a small move away from Anambra State. Let's, let's look at the country in general, the big picture. Uh, looking at the economy of Nigeria, how is it affecting the emerging opportunities for youth? Is it affecting them negatively or positively with the economy of Nigeria presently? Well, I, I would say you, you, can, you cannot actually say positively it should be negative because you have to look at the trend. The population is growing very high. And the economy is not actually growing at the commensurate with the population, the population growth. So definitely it's going to be negative. But what should we do with the population growth? We should take advantage of the population growth to grow the economy. How do we do that? What we should do at this point now, the companies, the springing up of the companies, the margin of the youth, the population of the youth now, begin to use that, that creative economy. You know, what thing we should get to know is about the creative economy. Creative economy is actually what you can do on your own. It's a talent that is inherent in you. So we should not actually look at government alone now, but that is why the creative economy is an oil. Imagine oil that is coming up. So you on yourself, what you can do, what you have passion to do, skillfully, you just have a little touch. All right, well, we're, we're, we're leaving now. Yeah. We're leaving. Time is almost yeah. up. Uh, quickly, uh, what's your final advice to Ndia Nambra? The youth generally is regarding emerging opportunities mm -hmm. of the opportunities which you list at the ICT and stuff in Anambra State. What's your final advice to them about it? Come, up, um, come out and just um, take advantage of what we, have, we are doing come to the Ministry of Youth Empowerment, go to local government um, headquarters and ask the youth development officers what is going on. And thus we should have in mind that it is not how well, but it is how far well we've done that matters. You could do very well today, but at the long run, you'll not be doing very well. So we should focus on how far well we've done and not how well we've done. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bonaventure and Nemali, Honorable Commissioner for Youth Entrepreneurship and Creative Economy. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. All right, uh, we are not yet done here. We are going on a short break and we'll be back. Don't go anywhere.